Today we're going to look at a couple of interesting compositional differential equations and we'll explore when they have nice solutions or maybe when they have solutions at all. So as a test case, we're going to start with the second derivative of f of x equals f composed with 1 over f of x. And we're going to use this method of guessing the format of a solution and then tweaking the parts of that format until we actually have a solution. And our guess will be f of x equals a times x to the r. But why is that a good guess? Well, I think there are two main reasons here. First of all, derivatives of functions that look like this are other functions that look like this. In other words, derivatives of power functions are power functions. And then compositions of power functions are also power functions. So let's notice this derivative rule also holds for like exponential functions and sines and cosines and the like. But the composition rule does not hold for that. Like the composition of trigonometric functions with each other produces just a mess. Okay, so let's get started with, like I said, our test case. So if f of x is equal to a times x to the r, then what does that mean? So that means that f double prime of x is equal to a times r times r minus 1 times x to the r minus 2. I think that's pretty clear. And then it means that f evaluated at 1 over f of x. Well, that's simply going to be f evaluated at 1 over a times x to the r, which will be a times 1 over a times x to the r all raised to the r power. But now maybe simplifying some things here, we'll see that we get a to the 1 minus r and then x to the minus r squared. And so that means if we want equality here, in other words, if we want to satisfy our compositional differential equation, then we need a times r times r minus 1 times x to the r minus 2 to be equal to a times 1 minus r times x to the minus r squared. And this doesn't have to hold just for some x, it has to hold for all x. And I won't say where x comes from. Maybe it comes from all real numbers, but it'll come from the domain of whatever function we end up with. Okay, so let's see if we can make this work. Well, if we've got a power function on the left and a power function on the right, then that means the exponents have to be the same. Otherwise, they wouldn't be the same function. We wouldn't even have like a place to start. So that means we need to have r minus 2 equal to minus r squared. But that's a quadratic equation that we can probably simplify pretty easily. So that's going to give us r squared plus r minus 2 equals 0. Let's see, does that factor nicely? I think it does. It factors as r plus 2 times r minus 1 equals 0, which tells us we have the possibilities of r equals negative 2 or r equals positive 1. But I'd like to quickly point out that it's impossible to have r equal to 1 because notice if r is equal to 1, if we plug that up here, we'll see that a must be equal to 0. And that's because, well, that'll cancel this bit out right here. And we'll have this right-hand side is equal to 0 for all values of x. But the only way for that to occur for all values of x is for a to be equal to 0. But I guess it's okay for a to be equal to 0. Well, actually, it's not. It may seem okay for a to be equal to 0, but it's actually not because that means this inside of our function here doesn't really make any sense. Okay, or maybe if you try to make it sense, well then uh, the solution that you would have is just the zero function, which is not super interesting. R equals one, which is A equals zero, doesn't really work. So that means we must have R equals negative two. Okay, so if we have R equals negative two, and we plug that into, let's see, maybe 
this equation up here, what do we end up with? Well, we'll have negative two times negative three, so that's gonna be six. So we'll have six times a. Well, and then we'll have a power of x over here, but that's gonna be the same as the power of x over here, so we might as well just worry about the coefficients. And then r equals negative two plugged into here, we'll get a cubed. Great, so we have six a equals a cubed, but then dividing by a, because we don't want a to be equal to zero, that's not an interesting solution, or maybe it's a solution that doesn't even work. We get a squared equals six, which means a equals plus minus the square root of six. So that really gives us two nice solutions here. We have f of x equals the square root of six over x squared, because we've got a negative two of our exponent that gives us a square in the denominator, or we have f of x equals negative the square root of six over x squared. Okay, so there we've got two solutions, and they're also pretty nice solutions. Okay, so let's maybe bump this up a little bit, and instead of looking at the case when we take the second derivative and get this composition, let's look at the case when we take the nth derivative and get this composition. Okay, so again, with this nth derivative case, we're still going to start with f of x equals a times x to the r, but now, of course, the derivative or the nth derivative is gonna be, well, quite a bit larger, if you will. So the nth derivative here will be a times r times r minus one times r minus two, ending at r minus n plus one. So we took n derivatives, that means we have n multipliers. And then we'll have x to the r minus n. And then, well, this composition hasn't changed. I guess maybe there's a follow-up question where you could change this composition a little bit and maybe play this game a little bit more. Maybe like I urge you to do that if you're interested. So this composition still gives us this same thing that we had earlier, which is a to the one minus r times x to the minus r squared. Okay, so just as before, we need those exponents to be the same. So in other words, we need minus r squared to be equal to r minus n. But that means we've got to satisfy the following equation. We have r squared plus r minus n equals zero. And then we can solve here and we'll get r equals well, it's gonna be negative one plus minus the square root of four n plus one over two. So that's what we get with the quadratic formula. And of course, you could take that value of r and plug it into the necessary equation and solve for a. So I will just point out here that this means that a to the r is equal to one over um, r times r minus one all the way up to r minus n plus one, where r is one of those values. Keep in mind that that denominator there could be zero, so you have to be careful. Like if this is an integer or if it's a positive integer, likely you hit zero on the way down. And so you've got to be careful about that. But that being said, what I want to look at is for some nice cases. So what would make a case nice? Well, I think a nice case would be given by r being, well, either a rational number or an integer would be even better. So when can we achieve an integer? Well, this four n plus one needs to be a perfect square. So well, let's write that down here. So we need four n plus one to be equal to some sort of perfect square. But let's notice that four n plus one is a positive integer. We know that because n is giving us the derivative. And let's just say we're not working with fractional derivatives, we're working with whole derivatives. So that means this is a number that's bigger than or equal to zero, which means four n plus one is a number that is bigger than or equal to one. And furthermore, that's clearly odd, so that means it needs to be an odd perfect square. So that means we have four n plus one comes from the set one nine, which is three squared, 
5 squared, which is 25, 7 squared, which is 49, 81, 121, and so on and so forth. But from there, we can grab like the appropriate values of n. And then maybe we could make this nice chart. So for certain values of n, well, we can solve for r, and then we can in turn solve for a, and we get these nice values of like the function. So let's look at some of them. So the first case is the n equals zero case, which means we're not taking any derivative at all. So this case is probably pretty easy to solve on its own. Actually, there are probably a bunch of solutions to this that aren't power functions. And here, well, what you get is one over x. And then the next case will be the n equals two case, which gives us four n plus one equals nine. But that's the case that we just worked with because the n equals two case is the second derivative case. And that gave us plus minus root six over x squared. And then next up, well, what can we do to achieve 25? Well, that'll be the n equals six case because we have four times six is 24 plus one is 25. And that gives us this. So it'll be the cube root of 20,160 over x cubed. And since we take a cube root, we don't get a plus minus here. We just get a single value. And then to achieve the next perfect square, we need n equal to 12. So that would be 48 plus one uh, or 49. And in this case, you get plus minus the fourth root of a fairly large number all over x to the four. So you can see that number is pretty big. And then you can just go on and on and on. So to achieve the next perfect square of 81, we need n equal to 20. And in that case, well, you're gonna get something over x to the five. I won't write that out. That gets even bigger and bigger and bigger. And then as you can see, you go on and on and on and on. And those are what I'll call like all of the nice solutions. Okay, so let's maybe end this by looking at maybe a companion to this problem and then leave you with maybe a follow-up to that. So for our follow-up problem, let's look at the case when f double prime of x equals one over f of f of x. And we're gonna guess again a power function for the same sort of reason that we did before. So our second derivative will be much as it was with our first example. And now let's look at this composition. So if we do f evaluated at f of x, so that's gonna be f evaluated at a times x to the r, so that'll be a times a times x to the r all to the r. So that's gonna be a to the r plus one times x to the r squared, which means that one over f of f of x is equal to, let's see, a to the minus r minus one, and then x to the minus r squared. Okay, so we got something like that. So now let's notice that these two facts give us a certain equation based on the fact that we want this satisfied. So we'll want a times r times r minus one times x to the r minus two equal to a to the minus r minus one times x to the minus r squared. So again, using the same sort of strategy we did before, we know something about the exponents. So we know we need minus r squared to be equal to r minus two, but that's the same sort of equation that we had before. Notice that's gonna solve to r equals one or r equals negative two. But notice the r equals one case doesn't make any sense again, because if r is equal to one, this left-hand side cancels to zero, but that means that a has to be equal to zero but a can't be equal to zero. That doesn't make any sense here. Or if you try to make it sense, make sense, well, that means it's like a really boring solution. Okay, so that means that here, this is not possible. 
So that means we should follow the line of reasoning where r is equal to negative 2 and see what we get. Okay, so plugging r equal negative 2 into the coefficient equation, so that means we want this brown underline and this brown underline, that'll give us a times, well, it's going to be 6a again, equals, well, plugging a r equals negative 2 up here, we get a. So we have 6a equals a, but look, that gives us a equals 0 again. But that means that that doesn't work either. So since neither of these work, that means that, in fact, there is no solution to this equation. I should be a little bit careful with that. There's no solution of this form. Maybe there's a solution of another form. In fact, if you can find a solution of another form, maybe post about it in the comments. That being said, we could have maybe the following obvious follow-up question, and that would be maybe what n values make this nth derivative of f of x equal to 1 over f evaluated at f of x maybe have a nice solution. So first of all, it has to have a solution, and then after that, it has to have a nice solution. Maybe where we're using the word nice just as we did before. And then maybe a follow-up to this follow-up would be like, maybe put some more compositions over here on the right-hand side. I think maybe it would be interesting to have n derivatives over here and m compositions over here. That would be a cool, maybe mega generalization of this problem. And that's a good place to stop.